we're going to talk about a nature study again and look at what is a nature journal you know what's the point of it why should we keep one and what would what can we expect it to look like you know once we and our kids start trying our hand at keeping a, a nature journal so obviously the first thing is to go and buy a journal which is a book with plain paper not lines so that it's it's nice for drawing and then to go out in nature and then comes the challenge of developing these drawing skills wow. how did it go with your kids i'm smiling because i was trying to think about when i first implemented nature study in our home and um i think that my eldest who is now a, a young woman of 27 she must have been about five or six years of age and we were on a three-week camping trip and I was a typical um, young overachiever, homeschool mom. And I was like, oh, we can't just do nothing for three weeks, you know. And um, I took along the CNA brown backed um, normal exercise books that they call them a nature journal. And the one side is white and the other side is land. And I remember her sitting, drawing, um, uh, we, we call them kivets. I think that that's a totally different name, you know, the, and they were yes, running around the campsite. And she eventually got so close to them that she realized they kept on ducking into this bush. And in the bush, they had their nest. So we were there for three weeks and the Lord blessed us with them hatching. So she's got these very childish little drawings um, of these long legged birds. <laughs> And the little nest and the little beaks coming out, it's, it's actually so precious. But that's one of my, my first memories of nature study. And then to say that I had other kids who would not pick up a pen or a pencil. You know, we went out, we had all the, the books and the, we had watercolor pencils, which were great, you know, instead of taking along um, the actual palettes and stuff Nothing, nothing. And eventually we just gave in and they started to use a camera and, you know, nature study that way. But, um, you know, you can get so the, the struggle becomes a testimony. That's what I was thinking to myself today about <laughs> things that I'm struggling with with my children as well. Yes, so. yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I think sometimes we have these pretty pictures of the mommy sitting on the picnic blanket and everybody's like, you know, so involved in their drawing and their nature study. And, and in reality, it's often not like that. There are some kids that will love it and take to it, like my more arty ones did um my little scientist was not interested um would rather just observe with his eye and i think that actually although we are talking about nature journals one of the things that charlotte mason does say is to teach our children to see fully and in detail and also to take a picture into their mind's eye and um and we must let our children do that if that's you know all that they're going to do that's good enough that they sit there and they are captivated with their scene with the lake with the birds with the tree whatever it is and let them to see fully and in detail for some it will work itself out in a nature journal page and then it's exciting because then you like really feel like you got this right today um and uh, but besides for that you know you can get super fancy very pretty nature journals um you know that's it's lovely but it's bells and whistles you know you can take a clipboard with a stack of um, white paper and and to have just as much um, connection with nature um, as a person with a 200 rand nature journal yeah. so seeing fact, that, that you might, that might be a good idea for the per perfectionist child that wants to rip the paper scrunch it up and start yes. over you know they're yeah. not ripping up the 200 rand nature journal, nature journal. Yeah, yeah yeah so how are things going in your home and what do your nature journals look like yeah. Well, we've only done it a couple of times this year. I don't think we ever did it consistently before. And uh, our, our outing last week was a rather windy one and we were at a war memorial. So we actually focused on that instead. Um, I did have one child take a photo and afterwards I was told it's a photo of a mask caught in a tree. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nature, you know? Yeah. So. <laughs> So yes, they are, they are working me up, you know, but, um, but I, I was just going to say, and another tip though, is that as the mom, we must take part in this as well. And even if you're not artistic, let your children see that you're also giving it a go and you're also trying and you're going to look back in six months time and see maybe how you've improved, you know, mm -hmm. um, 
I also found a book at the library that was about how to draw birds. You know, one of those birds books that show you shapes and sketches. And I took it out and my one child actually quite liked that. And um, he's younger, so he hasn't had many art lessons or anything. And I thought it was quite good because it just teaches the basics of observing shapes. And because now it's not just nature, it's actually the basics of drawing that the child is also trying to learn. So maybe that's a crutch that some kids might enjoy. Um, but, you know, as you say, doing this is going to teach you about your different children and their different character traits, which ones are willing to persevere, which ones are willing to take a risk, which ones flat refuse, which yeah. ones will do something alternative instead. Yeah. And it's another way of getting to know your children at a different level. And you only learn these things about them and can deal with these issues if you go out and give it a go. You know, Absolutely. if you stay at home and just do maths, you're not going to learn <laughs> no, this about you're not your children. Learn. I'm just thinking about the drawing of birds. Um, I I started doing um, some nature study when we were living in Joburg about 20 years ago. And one of the first birds that I tried to paint was a little hoopoe that used to come to our garden and walk around, you know, pecking in the ground and that sort of thing. In fact, if I can find it, we'll overlay it on the video as we talk, just so that parents know what it looks like to start with something. I've never been an artist. It didn't develop much further than that. But what it did do was um, instill in us um, a weekly uh, habit and discipline of getting out into nature. But if we if we if we want to speak um, in a how to with regards to a nature journal, um, Charlotte Mason's idea was always that you went along out into nature for two different things: a daily walk. And then another time when it was actual nature study, which would be sitting down, having your, your book with you, having your paints, your pencils, whatever it is, um, your nature guides, etc. And once you have chosen the, the object that you are going to observe and, and study and draw, to put around the picture, the, the common name, the scientific name, um, I actually enjoyed combining poetry with it, if we could, and putting, uh, getting the kids to do copy work and writing a little poem next to whatever it was. And, um, and, and that is the actual nature study in the journal. One of the things, and I think we even said it in our previous chat, is that have your bag packed with everything um, so that it's not a, a huge effort on the day and an excuse not to go out so have your nature bag packed with your things if you've got little guys in fact sorry i'm, I'm hogging the show here at the moment That's but fine. if you've got little ones who aren't ready to draw and that sort of thing what i always had in our nature bag was a magnifying glass they just love looking through a magnifying yeah. glass of things and we had from a toy shop um, they called it a bug box I'm sure you must still get them that you could collect bugs and they could watch it and then they could let it go. Um, and some of the places, like if we went up to Silvermine Dam, I always took along a fishing net and a jar and they would catch the tilapia in the dam and then empty them out when we left, you know. And that was also something to keep the little guys busy while the older ones are more focused. Any other tips for, for nature no. journals? <laughs> Those are great tips. We're not as experienced as you in this field. <laughs> so, You'll get there. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you're still doing it. And I'm like just, live, you know, riding on the coattails of what was once. <laughs> so that's great. Yeah. Well, hopefully that inspires some folks to make it an easy, simple thing um, for when they, they go out nature journaling.